Thank you. Not a problem. Th this was so cool because Ileana and I wanted to to do this, and we just we just said, "Oh, Don, please." <laughs> and we yeah. I'm such a pushover. <laughs> <laughs> we managed to get Kevin to join us, and well, I'm glad that, you did. Was, that was awesome. Yeah, it was great. I finally got to talk with Penny because we've only talked through like the group and private message. This is the first time I could do a video talk with Penny, so this was awesome. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank yeah. you. It's wonderful. And uh, yeah. I'm sure we'll have more SSP-related matters to bring forth. Because it's oh, like, no doubt. it never ends. It never ends. <laughs> it, is, well, it never ends. Yeah. I, I kept getting private messages. What about the spirituality there? And I, it was a big question for me too. I mean, I, and like I said, the, the most I'd ever really heard about it, you know, besides bits and pieces here and there, was from Corey Good. And actually, interesting enough, I, I meant to bring it up, but I didn't. I heard him say something on his show about. They mentioned the Law of One channeling specifically and told them to stay away from it. Yeah, I remember him saying that. And um, that resonated with me because we didn't go with anything that was positive at all. Right. But amazingly, my programming when I came home was so devoutly Christian that um, when I was when my memories were activated it was it was like someone had flipped a switch and my family has just they think I had a nervous breakdown yeah. right and then um, like I know we got to wrap up but um, um, they just ref referenced the densities and they never right. mentioned law of one. And no, I know. Just, that's why yeah, I asked you. So that's really interesting. I, I didn't know you said that. That's really interesting because yeah, it um, was in there somewhere, man. I can't tell you which episode it was, but yeah, it definitely stuck out for me. And I've been wondering. Yeah, because they that. they never um, like yeah, they never said anything. So what they, I think, guess what they did is they they understand that the density thing is a real thing, and then they just kind of um, but they don't reference that material in the yeah. program now. They don't even say, stay away from it. I think they just don't even mention it. Well, yeah. I think it was, if I'm not mistaken, it was just like, it wasn't like coming from a commander or something. You know what I mean? It was like uh, a peer or whatever. Because uh, uh, if I remember right, he was, I guess he said he was doing the science team thing on one of the solar warning ships at the time. Mm -hmm. And I'm a, and I think I'm not. And it's I'm kind of hazy because I know it's been well over a year since I saw it. But I think it was like coming from a counterpart. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. oh yeah, that law one stuff. Stay away from that garbage, kind of thing. Not like, you know, a command coming from on up high or something. So I, you know, I don't know. Well, I could good. be wrong about that too. So it's a good way to learn about channeling and the stamina you need for channeling to get that material. That's that's in itself is impressive, like five books long. Mm -hmm. I briefly looked at it. For me, it was just natural laws of the universe, and constantly they were focusing with me on psionics, uh, of building up on my psionic abilities so I could teach others. And they had me in communications a lot. They put me in different jobs. But the psionics is the very important for me. That was the focus of, of my stuff like how does nature work how do dualities work how does time travel work how does quantum mechanics works how does the universe work like what is space how is space made what are ets what are they made of what what compounds and stuff are ets made of like how are other cultures functioning that was what was major for me the magic the crystal mm -hmm. healing they teach you that in icc as well like crystal quantum drives because they build drives from crystals for ships for certain types of ships um it, for me it was mostly technology based with the psionics spirituality was what is esoterics how does that work how do you use magic as energy to to make it work for yourself and manipulate energy to change that to open portals so <coughs> basically we didn't we didn't even call it magic it, yeah. it, it each thing had its own scientific sounding name 
and magic was never used as a word. Right. Yeah. I don't suppose. <laughs> what I, I, makes that spaceship fly? Magic. Exactly. Like, like, yeah. What Pro- makes that spaceship fly? Uh, yeah. It has, and they use different names for it in space than they do here, so I don't know yeah. what the science on right. Earth are calling it. It's, okay, that engine uses microwaves b- bouncing off of a copper bell mm-hmm. shape, and it produces... It wasn't, it wasn't, it was in between electromagnetism and and a graph. Mm -hmm. But it produces a plasma field inside atmospheres, and those plasma fields are a safe place to to create a portal. Yeah. Like... And that's that's what I remember is what they're made out of and what the side effects are. That's why when I saw the SpaceX launch, I go, oh, I guess Earth people have the copper microwave engine now. Mm. And everybody else was telling me, telling all this other stuff, and I'm like, no. That's a copper microwave engine. Mm -hmm. And then I realized, oh, they're calling it the impossible EM. Yeah. (laughs) But so within a a short matter of time, we had a launch in Florida. We had a launch in Los Angeles. We had um, a launch over Russia and then one over China. So I'm going, okay, the big three all have the new EM engine or Mm -hmm. new to earth EM engine. So, that's been in space long enough that now the Earth militaries are getting it. So, yeah, or the plasma quantum drives. Uh, mm-hmm. they, a lot of their older engines were made on plasma, actually, but plasma is not that stable in certain type of um, environments. So they, mm-hmm. they've they've gone away from plasma to newer things. That's something I remember from mm-hmm. my fighter Mars. plane on Mars had a plasma engine. But that's old school. Damn, I wish I was recording this. Well, <laughs> oh, I am. I'm recording. Hey, no, that's okay. I'm uh, recording this, I mean, so you'll get it. Yeah. I left Mars in 1990, so yeah, that's old school. Yeah, it old, it's old school. But it's still used amazingly in some on some ships. Well, yeah. I mean, well, I've got a, I've got they a question. They don't throw anything away. They no, just they keep don't. using it. Right, it yeah. <laughs> I've got a question, and it's kind of left field um mm-hmm. and elaine if you gotta go you can you don't have to stick no, around uh, well, i'll stick around for the last one one more for the road um now there's something that comes up and this comes from eh, ever since i did that interview with that jason p moss character yeah it's just it's been sticking with me i can't shake it this whole alternate earth um thing and just different timelines and stuff you guys got any insight into that did you run into anything like that on alternate earth pe- beings from different timelines yeah yeah uh just quickly i'll just say this real quick sorry Penny. um they're um apparently um this is something uh like uh will glover has talked about and uh, anthony has talked about this and i encountered this very briefly i only had one recall of this but there was this parallel earth where the AI had completely taken over already, and it was like this other Earth, like literally that's what Will calls it, just the other Earth. And and I had a brief recall of of that because um that in I guess in that timeline the Nazis did win the war on the surface, right. and then the AI can, but they became transhumanist like overnight. So black goo. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, bad joke. Yeah. Um. I was taken into the future, 13,000 years into the future, by one of the ancient builder races who called themselves the L-E-L. Um, and I saw, like, crystal cities, beautiful wharves, like water on the wharf. I was standing on a wharf looking over the crystal cities. So that's, and they took me, somehow they, they opened a pocket in time. And their ship traveled through a pocket in time into the future because they they have some kind of a time dilation dilation device time dilation on their ship that can do this 
and it took me way into the future. I'm not sure what the planet was. I know it wasn't Earth, not Earth, but it was quite advanced technologically, yet well, the technology was well suited with the environment. They didn't ruin their environment. So that that's my experience, one of my experiences with time travel. The he, well, he, he, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Betty. I went interdimensional several times and found myself outside of space-time entirely. And I was looking at the stack of timeline fabrics um, and I saw the 21 that I was taught in not often and I saw the each timeline as a thread and how they were woven together they weren't like fabric like we make clothes out of it was more like okay spider web weaving and the the timelines would go parallel and then they would come together and run together for a while and then split off again or have some sort of a knot and <clears throat> like five timelines would come together because they would have disasters and they'd form into a knot and one would come past and that would stick together for a while and then other threads would come off them and that literally every density was a stack of those fabrics and they they had portals between them that connected them like quilting and that this was a universe and so there are more threads than you can possibly imagine and they are all different and the closer they are together in this this fabric the more alike they are but because they're different different threads they have things different mm -hmm. and um i was just going through and traveling through all of them and i know in nachtwaffen there was a parallel timeline that they accessed and that the people who traveled back and forth generally came back completely insane and died within a month so um, I've mentioned in other interviews that I do travel dimensionally and so they I was one of the people that they kept popping back and forth because I didn't die. So, um, yes, they have a AI culture. Um, they have a black goo AI, and they think they're in heaven right now, and it's been, what, 70 years that they've had AI control, and they're to the point now where the that the AI is is saying we don't want to be the servant anymore. Mm. So um, the last time I went was in about 2013, and um, they were starting to have problems. And the last time that I traveled interdimensionally was in 2016. And I was shown our thread having a knot in this time zone, this time period, where five timelines were going to come off of ours. And that one split off in 2012, and one split off in 2016, and another one is supposed to split off in 2018. And I didn't get the year for the last two to split from each other. 
but the last two are the only ones that have positive outcomes. So, um, well, great. That I cheered me right on up. Well, the, the <laughs> ones, the ones that have split off already, you've been spared negative outcomes. Um, one of them was New World Order, and the other one was the Zeta hybrids. And the Zeta hybrids was so bad that their own descendants were coming back to prevent its. And and its that's creation. what uh, Jason was talking about. And he said he had actually seen an altar of himself. He was he went to this place. He's been involved with this Zeta hybrid, who's been trying mm -hmm. to stop some type of uh, hybridization program for whatever the reason was. He was saying something about they needed our DNA for space travel, like faster than light travel or something like that. And the particular group that was doing that had reached the end of clonability, and they had bred out the, the ability to reproduce, and they were going extinct because they couldn't reproduce. And so they have been doing genetic experiments on humans for at least 100 years and trying to produce a hybrid where the, that they could reproduce again. And um, the resulting culture was so horrible that their descendants came back to try to stop it. Interesting. Yeah, that, that fits in pretty nicely with what he was talking about. That That's not a positive outcome in my point of view. No, I wouldn't think so. When when your descendants from 20,000 years in the future and 40,000 years in the future are both coming back in time to stop that timeline, that's not a positive outcome. Mm -mm. And also, um, for the time dilation and time travel, natural organic portals could programmed to go backwards into the future or forwards into the future as well so natural portals mm -hmm. can be um, amplified with technology to do that so I've heard rumors that the um, military is experimenting with doing that if it's possible there are folks in the black ops that are doing it yeah like that that's what I've been finding, the deeper I dig, the more crap is out there. Exactly. It's not just technological portals that's made by technology. Natural yeah. portals can be used as well with amplification of technology to do the time travel business. Mm -hmm. um, I do understand that there is, I don't know if they're extraterrestrials as in physical bodies, or um, interdimensionals, but there is a group that basically functions as time cops, mm -hmm. and they have put a stop to what um, the CIA has been doing. I've heard. I've heard there's a faction in the secret space pro program called the Time Corporations. They supply the time tech for time travel. Again, that was Time Corporations. That's, and I've run into some of their agents in my time traveling when I've been doing some time traveling through my own natural abilities I've seen some of them so there there is an oversight group that acts as the time mm -hmm. police so I could corroborate I can confirm that penny I've well, heard that this, too. the CIA was was going back in time and changing things um, in our timeline the South won the Civil War <laughs> And they changed that because the South was unable to beat the Germans in World War II. Oh, interesting. So they changed that so that that the United States would beat Germany, and then they still lost to Neuschwabenland. Yeah. Sometimes so. if you change time, it will be altered by somebody else to make it what they want it. Even though you fixed mm -hmm. it, somebody else will go in and muck about and do it their way, and then you don't get the timeline results you were hoping for. And that other group has to go back and redo it, so it's like messing with time on different layers. 
And I've always wondered if it's just like creating infinite branches of the like, kind of like the threads you were talking about, Penny. Just yeah, creating infinite it's, branches it's, every time someone goes back and changes something. It it may change it, but there's still this timeline where it, it hasn't changed. Yeah. And so it's they, just my best guess. They, I don't they, know. They, <laughs> they've been screwing around with the timeline since the 1940s. That's what Project Rainbow was about. I've heard 1866 with the, with the um, with the secret societies that the these time corporations even the, then in the 1800s they were um, they were already had time travel. They already had um, anti grav engines in the 1860s because there was a man who lived in the town over from where I do that built a dirigible that was powered with an anti-grav device. That's right, the airship sightings of the 1860s in yeah. US America, yeah. So it's, it's, yeah. Not, it's not surprising that they had time travel devices in 1866 in these secret um, groups, secret societies. Yeah, th this, yeah, well, this particular group was was remotely um, connected to the Tula. So yeah, um, yeah, that guy was from um, northern Germany, where they had the um, um, the secret laboratory where the Bell was developed, and uh, a lot of the rocketry, the Nazi rocketry, uh, was all in northern um, Germany, and um, mm -hmm. that's why they actually rerouted. Patton wanted to go after Berlin, and they rerouted him to take out yeah the, take uh, that base in there he's like why there's nothing there and they're like shut exactly. up just do it because he wanted to be the russians <laughs> into berlin and they yeah rerouted him to take up these um facilities these underground um facilities where they were developing yeah. rocketry and anti-grav all the basically uh the nazis all the secret super weapons that hitler right. promised all those factories as you know were in northern germany and uh so they rerouted him to take Pen those out first panamundi was in denmark Right. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. That's what I mean. Like that area in um, yeah. yeah. I guess the Baltic Baltic Sea. Yeah. I think, I so. think so. Yeah. My brain gets over full some nights. Oh yeah, me God. too. <laughs> I think I think it's time to uh, to to yeah. Say. It's I I'm to the point where the brain is shutting down. So. Mm -hmm. Me too. Yeah, this is the epilogue, but we're now we're done the epilogue, so. Yes, yes. <laughs> so I'm going to stop recording. Anyway. All right. Good night, guys. Well, thanks for getting night. that last bit for me, Elena. Thanks. Good night. Thank you. Night.